Today's video is going to be a small extra video that relates to my previous video where I made smart switches using Sonoff Minis and these MK Retractive Switch Modules. And in that video I mentioned that these switch modules are a bit too stiff to press, like the force to press them is actually quite a lot, and it is really annoying. You have it in the wall and if you've got to almost purposefully click it, if you want to just walk into a room and hit the switch beside, behind you to like turn the lights on like you normally would, it can be a bit too stiff and almost just you don't get enough force to actually hit it, you've almost got to stop and consciously click it. So I mentioned that was a bit annoying, but someone actually commented on that video very helpfully, I'll try and put the comment on the screen, and pointed out that these actually have two springs inside them, and if you take one of those springs out, it makes it a lot lighter. And I've already tried it on the other one I've got, and it made a massive difference, so I thought I'd make a video showing how to do it, because it's quite a simple process. Now as the initial disclaimer, just because I know people will moan, in this video we will be essentially modifying a piece of hardware that's, you know, a piece of sort of mains electrical hardware, you know, this is, this is certified for UK mains installations, it's gone through loads of testing and stuff, and you are now modifying it beyond what the manufacturer designed it to do. Now, with my, my setup here, I'm totally comfortable doing that, because this isn't switching any sort of high voltage or any high current. This is literally, a, it's switching a zero volt contact to a microcontroller. So basically there'll be no current flowing through it and no voltage, so I'm totally comfortable performing this modification and you don't actually need to even dig into any of the actual parts that handle the mains. However, you know, this is, a, is rated for, what, 10 amps, 250 volts, so, you know, maybe if you were switching a lot of current with it, you've got that additional risk that you have now modified it, but for this particular setup, I'm not too concerned, but that is just a consideration to bear in mind that you are taking something that's designed to work, you know, it's certified with, for UK mains installations and stuff, and you are modifying it out with what, you know, the manufacturer designed. But this makes an absolutely massive difference to this module. So to do this is actually a very simple process. You don't actually need to take the back off or go into anywhere there's any sort of mains contacts or you know terminals or switch contacts or anything like that, which is good because if you take these modules apart, they tend to fall into a million pieces and be a complete pain to put back together. A bit of fun with a module from Click where the tractor switch modules had a tendency just to explode into a million pieces. One came pre-broken and the other one fell apart as soon as I dropped it onto a bit of carpet and I had to put them all back together and it was a total pain. So yeah, we don't actually need to take it apart fully, which is nice. But essentially, on the front, you'll see you've got obviously the black plastic and you've got this little front white piece. We just need to remove this front white piece. So, I mean, obviously it might be a different colour depending on what module you've gone for, but yeah, we just need to remove this front piece. So you'll see at the top here, it's basically it's clipped under this black bit at the back, on both the top and the bottom. So I don't think it matters really which side you take it out from, but basically I find if you put a screwdriver just under this little piece here and carefully lever it down, that comes off. And that now gives you access to the main switch rocker. And as you can see under there, there's our two springs. So I don't know why they've put two springs in this, but yep, there's two springs under there. And that is why it's so stiff to press, is those two springs we have here. See one there and the other one there like that. Now this is where I am saying that you are kind of modifying it out with what, what MK intended. Because it is possible that these two springs were required to achieve it springing up quickly enough that you wouldn't have any sort of arcing if it was switching high current because you know if you were you know if you hold a switch sort of halfway down it's not quite on or off and it ends up arcing it's possible that you need these two springs so that it springs up really quickly and solidly and makes a clean disconnection but again i'm switching no real current here and no voltage so it doesn't really matter if it doesn't spring up as fast as it does here and it still springs up perfectly quickly now interestingly i was i actually didn't even consider doing this when I found it was too stiff and that wasn't because I hadn't really thought about it but it was because I'd previously been using these two these sort of center off retractor switches that click in two directions and weirdly with these ones if we take them apart these only have one spring on each side so in these ones there is actually only one one spring on each side so that's why I actually didn't bother taking it apart because I thought well it'll just be one of these but half but actually you know it always it shows it always it's always good to check because yep these ones only have one spring each, so you, you can't make these any lighter at all. But these ones, you can. So put that back together, and then all we need to do is remove the spring. So it's a very tricky process just to explain on camera, because it is just purely a tactile, just fiddling about type thing. But I find you don't actually need to take the switch rocker out, because again, if you do that, things fall out. You probably, you generally do need to take this out if you want to put the spring back. So that's the only warning I would say, is if you take the spring out, to put it back, you do, need, you do need to kind of take this out, which you can do. You basically just need to lever it here and here with a screwdriver and just carefully lift it out. 
and just be careful that there's bits of metal inside that might fall out and remember where they need to remember where they go. But to remove the spring, what we can just do is ping it out with a flathead screwdriver. So essentially there's a little post that sticks up to the bottom and a little post that sticks down from the plastic bit here. And all we need to do is just ping it off. So generally what I found worked best is just, it's really hard to do on camera because I'm leaning over a tripod and a million lights, but you basically just need to hook the bottom one and just unhook it from the little post. And then I found just sort of, I don't know, just putting this part way up and just basically, you know, forcing it out. Like I'm not obviously being super careful because it, I don't really care about the spring. I don't want, I'm not going to put it back in or anything. But basically you just need to get the screwdriver in fairly high up. There we go. Basically hook it under fairly high up and then just ping it down and then the spring will eventually fall out. And now that switch is so much lighter to click. Unfortunately, I can't demonstrate it on camera. I've not got any sort of tool I can use to measure it. But this is now the sort of level that, yes, it is stiffer than, say, a normal light switch to press. It's not too much. There's not a huge amount in it. And it's at least at the level that if I walk into a room, I can sort of backhand the switch or hit it with my elbow and reliably click it. Whereas before, that was pretty difficult. So there you go. That was a very quick video showing how to do that. And yeah, it's not the most interesting thing in the world, but this has actually made these modules totally usable. I use a lot of MK stuff, just I've tried other brands, and I do use others, but I've had a lot of issues with some brands that I could rant about for ages. So I use a lot of MK stuff, but these modules were so stiff that it was putting me off using them. It was almost like if there was ever a situation where I might need a retractive switch on a grid, I would consider not using MK just because these switches were so stiff and other brands were a lot better for just being less stiff. Whereas now, actually, now I've modified that, that's perfectly fine. Totally happy to use that. So yeah, it's quite easy to do. The other thing I find that's quite amusing is what we have here is a normal MK two-way switch, just you know, a normal one that latches in each position. But I popped open for a bit of a laugh. I mean, a bit of a laugh. I'm not. I have. I have the, the most fun. I, I open light switches for a laugh. Yeah. Anyway, but opening that up, you can see under there that has the same little posts that stick up from the black plastic, and also the same pegs on the underside of the white rocker because they've also used the same moulding. So you can actually take this take the spring, remove this switch rocker, you, you do not need to kind of take that out, and then put that spring in, and it will actually turn this into a retractive switch. Now, I don't know why you would, maybe unless you had one of these, and you wanted it to be less springy, and you also wanted another retractive switch, and you had one of these lying around, then maybe you could make your own. But yeah, I found that quite amusing. The only annoying thing is I've got this double pole switch, and this doesn't have the appropriate pegs. So, I don't think you can modify one of their double pole switches to be retractive, which again, I don't know why you would do that, but there may be weird situations. It has the pegs on the black piece, but not on the bottom of the moulding of the switch rocker. So on the double pole switch, you might not be able to do it. However, I've only got these ones that have a neon in them, which are you know clearly a different moulding for this piece here. I don't know, if, if you've got like, the double pole switch that's just got a white rocker, you might be able to turn it into a retractive switch, which I mean, don't know again why you would need a double pole retractive switch, but yeah, possibly. But yeah, a very simple little video there, nothing, nothing much to it really, but just thought it'd be worth just demonstrating how you can take these apart and make them significantly easier to press. So yeah, probably one of my quickest videos I've all ever done, but still rambled on for ages. So now I tend to go and get this back in the wall and, well, have a much easier to press light switch. So there you go, thank you very much for watching. Obviously it's a very quick video and not very exciting, especially if you've not got any interest in using these switches, but I thought I'd put it out anyway. And stand by for future videos coming in a couple of weeks where I've got quite a few interesting things coming up, so definitely stay tuned for that. But yeah, thank you very much for watching.